Good afternoon. My name is uh, Sarjan Simonovic, and I come from uh, uh, Computational Engineering and Energy Sciences Group from Computer Science and Mathematics Division at the Oak Ridge National Lab. Uh, I'm honored uh, by the invitation to speak at this, uh, at this symposium, and being the last presenter here, I would like to also to congratulate the organizers on a really a flawless, uh, a flawless job. My background is in uh, uh, computational modeling of uh, materials and materials processes, uh, applied mechanics, applied mathematics, and uh, high-performance computing. Uh, recently, for the last few years, I have been working mostly uh, with my colleagues on multi-physics and multi-scale problems, such as is the subject of today's presentation. Uh, I have... Uh, liberally borrowed materials for this talk from my colleagues. Uh, and as you can see, they are of uh, very diverse scientific backgrounds, which is, which is one of the best, really, um, best things about working at the Oak Ridge National Lab. As the outline, this talk includes a short introduction to computing at ORNL. From the previous talks, I understand that most of you are aware of, to some extent or another, about the computing uh, facilities at Oak Ridge, so this introduction is going to be very short. Um, I will then describe some scientific and computational modeling challenges of additive manufacturing processes, as is the subject of this talk, and uh, both in metal powder and uh, uh, reinforced polymers. And finally, I would conclude with uh, what I see as opportunities for the collaborations. So Oak Ridge National Lab is one of the oldest research labs in the U U.S. Department of Energy. So uh, computational sciences buildings are, so you see here at the new campus, and this is, um, uh, well, it's kind of dead. So, um, the, the computational buildings are here, and, uh, all right, great, and, and you can get a hint of where the computer system is by the, you know, steam exhaust from the cooling towers. It's uh, some, some, facts and figures about the lab. As you can see, uh, Oak Ridge National Lab really put emphasis on scientific collaboration. It also put an emphasis on scientific output because it is a office of Sci Department of Energy Office of Science Labs. It's very open. And uh, uh, as you can see from the number of visitors, and, and really puts the emphasis on, uh, on the, as I said, scientific output and the, uh, technology transfer. This slide is probably a year old, so all this number of patents has, uh, have certainly gone up, as is the active uh, number of licenses. So the computing facility at Oak Ridge is one of the you know, largest computing facilities in the world. It's also part of the research ecosystem of the lab and it uh, combines with other unique facilities such as the spallation neutron source, which we use for investigating materials and investigating the, uh, some of these processes that we are interested in. For the Office of Science Lab, we have a very healthy industrial computing uh, collaboration program. As you can see here by some of the examples and some of the significant accomplishments of the project. You can get the flavor of, the, of, of this program. And it also illustrates how our, how our users are advancing the DOE goals. Uh, there are wide modes of access of lab resources as well as modes of collaborations. So uh, emphasis is put on the open research. Uh, proprietary research or is, is really based on the full cost recovery. So looking back of um, some previous collaborations that uh, we had in computational science, 
few years back, we had a relative, well, I would call it very successful uh, collaboration with uh, Adventure uh, project uh, that was developed under Earth Simulator, uh, Earth Simulator project in Japan. We used the Adventure software for rapidly prototyping a code for uh, uh, performance of nuclear fuels and uh, demonstrated its viability. In this case, we have coupled uh, thermal mechanics, uh, uh, depletion, and also thermodynamics of nuclear fuel. And used this for all kinds of other simulations, such as, uh, uh, such as you know, modeling of the microstructure evolution, as you can see here. So this is the performance at that time. We, you know, we, we rarely were able to grab the whole machine. But again, this is 2008, 2009. Now the situation is much better. So going back to the topic, really, of the presentation, which is additive manufacturing and computational simulation. So um, we can say we printed a car, right? So uh, it was a demonstration project and done in a very short time at a breakneck pace, uh, as all these demonstration projects uh, were. It's also a partially industrial collaboration project. So we thought that we are going to get some um, time to, to breed, but uh, it seems that we are, we are going to go even faster now. So what is additive manufacturing in a nutshell for those who are not familiar with, with manufacturing processes? Um, it's a way of transferring the CAD model through um, some process of disassembling or slicing it and then growing it through a layer-wise assembly of bonding one layer to another or growing one layer to another to a complete part. It has numerous advantages, such as you, what you see here, its ability to fabricate complex high-cost structures, uh, low buy-to-fly ratio, this is lingo from aerospace, uh, shorter lead time, uh, and uh, you know co part consolidation, and all of that. Obviously, it comes with its own uh, challenges, and we are involved in quite a bit of research and development to to overcome those challenges. And the computational modeling and high performance computing are the key enabling technologies. Uh, for achieving that. So we need to develop new materials, which are not the materials that of the previous manufacturing processes, but the ones that are more tuned for, for, for this process. We want to uh, optimize the process, make it viable in, in a different, for the different situations and, and make it uh, energy and, and uh, uh, efficient as, as possible. Um, we want to develop new methods for characterization of the, of the process and also want to get them uh, uh, you know, to the next level, obviously. There are many of these uh, technologies and I will be able to just cover maybe two in this project, uh, depending on how much time do I need to make up. So as an example of very fast Additive manufacturing process is this what is called e beam manufacturing. It goes, it follows the similar process of any additive manufacturing process of CAD model and then building a layer by layer by using a rapidly um, deflecting electron beam, which you know you can do that very fast because you have uh, essentially magnetic lenses to, to, to move this beam around. So you usually go in this raster pattern for covering the areas. Uh, however, the microstructures many times come out uh, not the way we want. So in this, in here you see the distribution of what is called uh, 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 columnar and equiax uh, uh, structures. And um, microstructure it plays one of the most important roles in the material performance. And then f uh, by these processes, we believe, and we are actually aiming 
to be able to manipulate this microstructure and tune it to the properties that we need. So imagine having a turbine blade that has a tailored microstructure for the different locations on the turbine blade, which, uh, which needs to meet different uh, loading conditions. So this is the goal of this crystallographic texturing engineering. Uh, there are multiple challenges, obviously, for high-performance computing of this, of, of, this, of this process. If you look at the one meter cube, which is, well, fairly large object, it has, for the metal powder bed, it has about 10 to the 12 particles, and there are 10 to the 9 meters of weld line of melting this uh, material as it's being built. There are huge temperature gradients, rapid heating, cooling, melting, solidification, all of that requires uh, high performance computing, very high resolution of the computational mass. There are heterogeneous and multi-scale problems. There are different locations, there are powder locations that changes into the, the, into the melt pool and then it solidifies and so on. We also need to optimize the path of building and uh, also to look at the large number of parameters that are, are, miss, that are um, missing uh, interpretation and the correlations. So all of these issues are linked to the high performance computing. So we use a, a, a array of tools. We use at the lowest level, we use molecular dynamics, then phase field models, then particle methods. So this is again something that, that it's, it's difficult even to know what the properties of this system is. You know, what, are the, what is the emissivity in the powder bed? What is the you know, coefficient of extinction, extinction? What is the coefficient of absorption? All of that. And then going to the higher scales, look at the repeated melted and, melting and solidification and different paths that you can take to achieve a certain shape. And finally, at the, at the highest level, you have residual stresses, distortions, and all that. So on all of these, we try to use high performance as uh, computing as much as possible. Um, luckily for us, the sensors are also following the technology. So in this case, uh, we can now instrument the machine and the build, build artifact by numerous sensors. However, they are giving us streams and streams of data. In this case, for the part that's built in two days, we again, we again have a huge amount of information that we would like to process, and these are the ideas that we are following up to how to include it in the computer models, how to use data, uh, data science here to, to, to uh, assist with the, with the computer, com computer models. So this in-situ monitoring have, uh, we are also de developing new methods for in this case, we are looking at the development of the infrared camera within the uh, built chamber and then correlating them, correlating the findings with, uh, with uh, uh, X-ray tomography, which is a post-process uh, uh, part of the, uh, of the analysis. So go back to now for to high performance computing. Uh, so in this case, we are using for a melting and solidification, remelting and resolidification. We are using code Truchas, which was developed at uh, Los Alamos National Lab for modeling metal casting. It contains heat conduction models, convection, radiation, multi-component, advection diffusion uh, process. It's uh, incompressible, multi-material, free surface, fluid flow. Uh, with volume of fluid interface tracking. So it is being now developed at LANL and Oak Ridge for AM applications of an RNL high APC system. So what you see here is the movement of, uh, of uh, standard raster uh, for covering the surface, and which is called Baustrophedonic, which really means in Latin um, following the you know, oxen path. Now, if you take some other paths, you see that the type of the melt pool is different. And it's very important, this type of the melt pool and the gradients inside the melt pool are the ones that have a huge influence on the, of the, on the microstructure. So you can also recognize that these are the space filling curves in uh, applied mathematics. So 
there are plenty of them, obviously, and some make better microstructure than the others. We also are using different, so, so the idea is to explore these curves and explore these families of curves to come up with the best possible microstructure uh, that can be tailored to the, to the problem. Um, the problem is not so simple because there is also microstructure effect through the Z-build. So what are the, the, some aberration at various scales? So one that is very important at titanium 6.4, which is a very important alloy for, for aerospace and, and some other applications, is this formation of this banded structure between the layers of uh, melted titanium. So, so this structure exhibits something that is called colony shape, whereas the other one in the bulk uh, contains something that's called basket weave. Uh, they are each by themselves is not you know, that important as much as the, there is a difference and there is a contrasting properties in between. So therefore, there is a, these are the areas where the cracks are going to nucleate and then they are going to grow. And then this piece is not going to be um, fulfilling the, 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 the role that it, was, it is being built for. So in this case, we, are, uh, we have used uh, to try to explain this formation because it hasn't been really explained why, why does it form in this, in this manner. Uh, we use the phase field method on high performance, high performance imp imp implementation of the phase field method with the assumption that, and try different assumptions. One of the assumptions was that, that this difference between the basket weave and the colony shape were driven by the thermodynamic driving forces and different nucleation rates that the material experiences as these layers are being grown and then uh, reheated and uh, going through the cooling and, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and heating process again. So um, what, what, what we uh, end up doing is set a large number of high performance computing phase field simulation that confirmed one of the assumptions in which, in which way this uh, structure forms. And uh, as you see here, there is a, uh, this is the uh, phased field, uh, see. So this is the phase, phase field triggering of, of, uh, of this basket weave structure, as you can see, that is driven, uh, uh, of the colony structure that is driven by the lower thermodynamics force and, uh, and also the lower nucleation rate. So the cru crucial finding here was that the low nucleation rate prom promotes the colony uh, when the new nucleus uh, sees the, the, well, the, the certain strain fields uh, of a nearby variance of the of the of the uh, of the alpha phase, and then the high nucleation rate promotes the basket weave and all the when there is a when the nuclei see the complex uh, complex strains field and uh, and essentially allows it to create multiple uh, a multi multiple variants of the alpha phase in the, in the melt in the melt pool. Uh, let me then. Uh, skip from the, from the po through the polymer part. I will just then include it in the material for the presentation and summarize the talk by saying that uh, there is a broad spectrum of the computational science that is required to fully realize the potential of additive manufacturing. On, the, on your left side here you see all the physical phenomena that we are attempting to to resolve and to simulate. And then on the right hand side, you see all these um, computational science issues and, uh, and applied uh, mathematics issues uh, that are obviously all for this kind of problem in the domain of high performance computing. So some tools exist that cover some of these areas. 
you know, molecular dynamics, some variation of lamps, uh, some variation of phase field, uh, some variation of the continuum melting and solidification, uh, some, some variation of the thermodynamic models. But there are, no, there are none that we, know, that we know that are scalable and uh, fulfill all these requirements or majority of these requirements uh, for HPC. So, so reeks, this recap of the physics models, again, some usual suspect on both sides, both in the you know, very challenging physical proce processes and then in the numerical methods that, and the applied math algorithms that are needed for to, to uh, implementation of these large uh, and very long process uh, conditions. So to uh, go back to uh, you know, what I see as, as some potential here for the opportunities for collaboration, um, I listed them on this slide based on the conversation and on the presentation that I have seen this uh, two days. Obviously, I would be looking, and we at Oak Ridge Lab would be looking forward to pursuing uh, these topics or any other topics that are related to the computational sciences and, and uh, in this case, additive manufacturing. Editing manufacturing was here really put as a, as a, as a discussion piece. Uh, we, have, I can, we have a very active and ongoing research in, uh, uh, in, in uh, energy storage, so uh, lithium-ion batteries of current generation, next generation, um, nuclear fuel and nuclear engineering uh, problems, uh, composite materials, um, dynamics of power networks. So these are just some that I can intelligently talk about, but then there is a bunch of other topics where I can then connect uh, you to a, to a resident expert at Oak Ridge National Lab. So with that, I will conclude this talk, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you.